Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Opinion 5 Lessons from Thursday's Devastating January 6 Hearing Opinions There were a number of revelations from the House January 6 Committee's hearings on Thursday regarding former President Donald Trump's attempt to enlist the Justice Department in his scheme to steal the election. All of them were simply devastating. For example, former Attorney General William P. Barr made clear he had investigated claims of voter fraud before leaving in December 2020 so as to be able to rebut false claims of fraud. He testified that there may not have been a presidential transition if that had not happened. We also finally learned the identities of the Republican members of Congress who requested pardons from Trump, Rex, Mo Brooks, Allah, Matt Goetz, Fla, Andy Biggs, Ariz, Louis Gohmert, Tex, Steve Perry, Penn, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, Gar. The committee's star witnesses, Richard Donogu, former acting U.S. Deputy Attorney General, Jeff Rosen, former acting Attorney General, and Stephen A. Engel, former Assistant Attorney General for the Office of Legal Counsel, all testified that former Justice Department official Jeffrey Clark, whom Trump attempted to name as his acting attorney general, had repeatedly been told that there was no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Clark nevertheless pressured Justice Department leaders to send a letter to states falsely claiming the election was fraudulent to justify pulling back their electors. Coincidentally, it was reported that the FBI searched Clark's home on Wednesday. Return to menu Barr had told Trump at least three times that there was no evidence of fraud. After Barr resigned, Trump persisted in calling all meeting with Rosen and his colleagues to insist they investigate fraud. Rosen repeatedly told Trump his allegations had been refuted and resisted efforts to involve the Justice Department because they were not appropriate under the law. Testimony made clear that on multiple occasions, Trump or Clark attempted to push the department to find fraud where none existed. At one point on December 27, Trump, after being told there was no fraud, insisted that the department tell people that there was widespread fraud. Donogu testified that Trump instructed him to just say the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. Witnesses described Trump as agitated. Throughout these events, Trump seemed to be bent on whipping up his supporters. He told the public that his Justice Department had been missing in action, and he enlisted GOP lawmakers to recite his allegations of voter fraud to his rabid fans. Return to menu The Clark letter was only one of several gambits he tried in enlisting the Justice Department to overthrow the election. Engel testified that Trump wanted the department to file a lawsuit with the Supreme Court. Trump also wanted Rosen to appoint a special counsel, crackpot Trump lawyer Sidney Powell, of all people, to investigate fraud claims. Engel and Rosen explained in their testimony why each was unmeritorious. On New Year's Eve, the attorneys were asked to seize voting machines. They told him there was no basis in law or fact to do so. So instead, Trump called his homeland security official Ken Cuxinally and falsely said the Justice Department said he had authority to seize the machines. Meadows the next day even urged they look into a daft YouTube conspiracy theory that Italian satellites had changed votes. This was total insanity, Donogu said. Trump was determined to come up with any way to remain in power. The evidence of his corrupt intent should no longer be doubt. Return to menu The committee interviewed all those involved in the infamous January 3rd meeting in the Oval Office when Justice Department officials confronted Trump's attempt to appoint Clark as acting Attorney General. Rosen detailed the meeting, saying he wouldn't overturn the election because that was what the facts and Constitution required. Everyone present supported his position, apparently including then White House counsel Pat Cipollon. Donogu testified that he ripped into Clark's total lack of experience and competence in the meeting. Clark tried to defend himself, but no one supported him. Donogu said he and the entire Justice Department leadership would all quit if Trump put Clark in the job. Only then did Trump back down. For the time being. Return to menu Trump started lawyer shopping, 
when he ran into resistance from Rosen and Donogu, prompting Representative Scott Perry, a part to introduce Trump to Clark. Rudy Giuliani, in video testimony, said there needed to be someone in charge of the Justice Department who was not going to be concerned about their reputation. Rosen testified that Trump brought up Clark's name to Rosen for the first time on Christmas Eve. Rosen said he called Clark on December 26 to find out what he was up to. Clark